guys and welcome to the video and I hope that you are feeling awesome. Alright guys, today you find us back on the Trent and Mersey Canal. Um, if you watched Adventure 21, we have been to this area previously. However, today we're kind of going back on ourselves because we're covering the topic of Christina Collins and the Bloody Steps. Christina Collins wanted to find the cheapest way to travel from Preston, which is in Liverpool, to London where she was to meet her husband, Robert Collins, after he had found work. However, the only cheapest method of travelling from Liverpool to London was by narrowboat. So on the 15th of June 1839, Christina Collins, aged 37, began her journey as a passenger on a freight carrier narrowboat with the thoughts of a happy future with her husband. Christina was travelling with Captain James Owen, boatmen George Thomas and William Ellis and cabin boy William Muston. Christina began to feel unsafe as three of the four male occupants were drunk and using foul language. The increasing attention they were paying to her made her feel very uncomfortable. Christina had complained to the canal officials at Stoke-on-Trent and Stone about the crew's attitude, but she was told there was no space available on the London coach. So unfortunately, Christina had to have no choice but to continue her journey to London on the same narrowboat. As I said guys, I have been in this area before because this bridge was the first bridge that we crossed over on Adventure 21. However, we are going down on this side of it, so we are now on the opposite side of the, uh, the canal there. See, this bridge here that we're going under, guys, wasn't originally here. This is like a very newer build. So if you can imagine how this was back in the day with, you know, narrow boats going up and down this area, you know, this must have been very busy. Alright guys, we are coming up to uh, Rouge's Aqueduct and this is where James Brindley Bank is. Unfortunately, this is the location that on the 17th of June 1839 at approximately 5 o'clock in the morning, Christina Collins was found dead floating on the Trent and Mersey Canal at James Brindley's Bank by a boatman called Thomas Grant. She had neither shoes or bonnet on as was lying with her face downwards in the water. Thomas Grant drew the body from the opposite side of the turnpath with his hook with the assistance of a John Johnson. They carried Christina's body up the old stone steps through a narrow path and then a third or one mile walk to the Tabba Inn in Rugeley. Last time Christina was seen alive was by Mr. and Mrs. Mills at the Moo Hill Bridge 76 near Pasterfields. It was said the night before Christina's body was found that the local residents in this area heard loud screaming noises. However, they thought it was a drunken lady and they did not want to get involved. Just look how much is left of this area here. Now, try and visualise this, right, back in the day. This used to, obviously people used to get on to here and get off over, obviously go up the uh, steps over there. Mr. Barnett, surgeon of Rugeley, said he examined the body of the deceased at the Talbot Inn in Rugeley. When the inquest was held, he was conceived that the death was caused from suffocation through drowning. The Talbot Inn is now known as the Shrew in Rugeley. It is said that Christina's blood had dripped onto the original stone steps and that's why they were given the name of the bloody steps. Although these steps have been long been replaced, they are still known by that eerie name today. And I must admit guys, these steps are really steep. So how anyone was able to carry a body up that is absolutely crazy. 
Three of the four male occupants were charged for the murder of Christina Collins. On the 16th of April 1840, William Ellis was given a reprieve from the Home Office, which was received by T. Burton Esquire, Governor of the Stafford Prison. Ellis was then transported to Australia. On the 18th of April 1840, Captain James Owen and Boatman George Thomas was both hung in Stafford, where nearly 10,000 people attended. However, William Muston was not charged. So as you can see, the uh, canal system is uh, mainly used for recreational use now. So I decided to have myself a nice coffee, a bite to eat and take in this wonderful scenery is right in front of me now. Where do you two think you're going? Oh. <laughs> I must admit, I have enjoyed having my break in this location. It was discovered that George Thomas was innocent because he couldn't have murdered Christina Collins because he was so intoxicated he couldn't even remember where he's been, let alone murder someone. See, one thing it got me thinking was, right, say Christina Collins came to me and I wasn't able to help her. I would feel absolutely guilty to know that, you know, a couple of miles down the canal system, you know, Christina had her life taken away from her. I would personally feel guilty. So the question is, is how many of those people that she went to for help felt guilty? If you watched Adventure 18, I went to St. Augustine's Church and that is where her body is buried in the churchyard. I hope you enjoyed today's adventure. It's definitely been an eye opener and and uh, definitely hope you enjoyed the facts as well. So I want to say thank you ever so much for coming by. And always do your best to stay positive and screw those negatives. And I'll see you on the next one. Alright, bye-zy-bye.